All right, this week we're gonna go with Kelly Gallup's Stack Blonde. Uh, this fly was designed off of Joe Brooks Blonde series, uh, the Honeys, the Platinums. Um, we're gonna go right into it. This one is tied on a kill hook and they are tough to find these days and I wasn't just gonna order, you know, uh, a bunch of them just to tie. You know, maybe a half dozen of these flies, whatever it may be. So I'm going to bend my own. Um, it's going to be in the ballpark. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be exactly the same as the kill hooks, but we're going to get this. You're going to get the same uh, result basically. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take this right up my one third point. I'm just going to go ahead and heat this up real quick. And if you've watched the bending hooks video, pretty simple, pretty simple right here. Um, I'm just going to take a Leatherman. I'm going to bend this down probably, I don't know, let's say 45 degree angle, right like that. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is halfway between these two halfway between my bend and the eye of my hook. I'm going to heat this up a second time. And I'm going to give this a straight bend. So we're just going to straighten this out. And that's pretty close to what we're after. You can see, I'll get my hand behind it so you can see a little bit better here. You have this nice sharp bend right here and then it straightens back out. Um, like I said, this is pretty close to the keel hook uh, style that we're after and um, saves me from ordering a bunch of hooks. Lord knows I have too many of them to begin with. So, we'll get that out of the way and we'll get right into the time. We're going with the GSB 100. And I'm going to take this right back to the point of the hook. And I'm just going to build a little thread base here real quick. Nothing but uh, just a couple of wraps up and down the hook. And we're going right to the point on this. And then we're going to go with some yellow bucktail. Take a pretty generous amount on uh, especially on the tail. I like the tail to be a little thicker than the other two stacks that we're going to tie in. So, I mean, you can see that's a pretty generous amount of bucktail right there. Um, I'm going to start out by just cleaning some of these shorter fibers out and just get rid of those. Then I'm going to grab the tips here and I'm going to pull this up and try and line these up as evenly as possible. I'm not going to spend all day doing it, just get them in the, in the ballpark. Pull out any of the wild hairs that are in there. And then same thing, clean this up again on the back end. So now we're going to measure this out probably one and a half times. Right at one and a half times the overall length of your hook. And for a one watt Daiichi, that's that's pretty good, pretty good size tail. Throw this in. And I'm not worrying about cutting this just yet. I'm going to throw this in, run this all the way up to the first bend that I put on the hook. And then I'm going to cut this at an angle. Going up the hook. So it's going to give me a nice little taper there. little taper going up there. Then I'm just going to wrench down on a couple of these wraps here. Stay right at the point of the hook. And let's see what I got. I'm going to find four strands of gold 
crystal flush. And I don't like how these are sitting, so I'm going to line those up, make them a little bit more even. And I'm going to take these just shy of the overall length of my tail and tie those in. Four on my side, four on the camera side, as all the streamer tails go that have any flash. That's the way I tie all mine in, four on, just double it over and bring it on the opposite side. If you've watched any of the other videos, that's nothing new right there. So now I'm going to advance my thread back to the second bend. So I'm down the slope on my second bend and I'm going to have my thread right there. Before I go any further on that though, I want to take and just color this body up slightly. I'm just going to just going to touch that white thread up and if you want to use yellow, uh, it'll save you a step. You won't have to run the marker over top of that. But I'm just using the white thread. So we're going to touch it up with the yellow. Next we're going to go back to the bucktail on this. Um, let me see what we got here. Same thing, a generous amount, but not quite as much as we used on the tail. Pull this back. Get things somewhat even. Get rid of more. Get rid of your wild hairs. And then I'll actually run this one through the comb. Get some of the strays out there that just aren't going to make it. Now, I'm going to measure this out. And I want it to go halfway back my tail. You can see it right there. I'll give put my hand back so you have better reference. This stack is going to go halfway back the tail. Give me one more measure and I'm going to angle this cut. Cutting away from me, away from my hand, cutting away from it. That way when I make this first wrap, I'm not getting a ton of bulk. My first wrap, every single bundle of hair is captured. And then as I come forward, down this slope, I'm not tying a huge bundle in, but everything's still captured in this back, and you can see that nice little transition that we have there. It just reduces a lot of bulk, and it's a lot more secure when you tie it in. Now, I don't want this sticking straight up and down like that, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this back. And this overwing acts really as a prop for the marabou. It does add some bulk, but I think overall it's more of a prop for your marabou. So I'm just coming back over the hook a little bit to where that first bend is. Coming back over that just slightly. And I think I'm going to be good with that right there. From where it started, probably right here, to now it's laying back a little bit flatter. It just looks better to me. I, I like the way that, I, li I like the profile that, that I get from that. And I don't have to deal with all of that bulk and the marabou once we tie that in afterwards will lay down a lot flatter as well. So just come a little bit back over that first bend and it'll really give you a nice profile on this. So I'm just gonna touch this up again just slightly with the yellow and then I'm going to turn my hook up upside down and go back with my thread base here now probably going to have that halfway back that straight portion and grab some more yellow Back to the bucktail. This is the third and final clump on this one. Same thing. Nothing new here. Get that 
cleaned up a little bit. And there we go. And then the same distance on this one. I want it the same length halfway back the tail. Just going to have to use a little bit more material because we're more forward on the hook. And then cut this at an angle. And I can get a little bit more aggressive on that angle. There we go. And then get this tied in. Get that first wrap around all the bundles, around around the entire bundle. I'm going to work my way back just slightly as well. And that's going to be just a shade on the long side. That should do it. Now, as I start moving forward, I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure with each wrap. That way I know I have this nice and secured. Everything looks good. We're going to work this right back. There we go. Through the bend of that hook, or through the, through the hook. Everything's looking pretty solid. Next what I'm going to do is back to the crystal flash and I'm going to take four strands again. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly four strands. If I wind up with three, if I wind up with five, I'm not going to be upset. Looks like we got five. And then same thing as before, only we're going to go a little bit longer on this. This thing's don't want to straighten out for me there. That looks better. We're going to go past the tail on this one. So I'm going to take this all the way back. I'm not worrying about measuring this out just yet. I'm just getting these tied in. But I know I want to be past the tail a decent amount. So get those tied in. Bring this forward. back around same thing on the other side and then just trim it off in the ballpark of where the last ones were okay now for this I really don't have a measurement on this one I just kind of eyeball what looks good I, I know I want to be a little bit past the tail of the hook so I, I really don't have a good measurement for you on this one I just eyeball it and it looks pretty good to me right there and then those ones are tied in. So there you go. There's the last stack of crystal flesh for this one. And then the last piece to this fly is going to be the marabou stacks. And we're going to stack these on three quarters of the way back the overwing going up, up the hook. So tying it in right at our second bend. And they're laying flat on the ascent of that hook. Now, cut that just shy of the eye. And I'm going to clean this up just a little. This is just building a little taper, giving you a nice little bullet style head. And, yeah, I mean, that's about the length that I want on that. Now the first one I started on my side, I'm going to bring a second one on the camera side, measure this out, get about the same length. We're going camera side on this one. Same thing, trim this off. And then you're going to clean this up a little bit with your thread wraps. I'm not getting too carried away about cleaning that up just yet. I'll do that at the very end. And then this one back to my side. A little bit more toward the center than the first two were. It's just how I do it. I mean, if you want to do it a different, if you want to start in the center and work your way out, that's fine as, as well. I just like starting on the outsides and working my way in. That way I know I'm 
you're going to be able to cover up all the gaps that I might have. And then get your last one in there. Get this tied and secured. And there we go. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is clean up this marabou. Form the head a little bit better. And then we'll be ready to whip finish. Just get some nice clean wraps on here. There we go. Clean that up pretty well. And then whip finish. As I'm whip finishing, I'm just cleaning up these little little gaps that I have in the front. I mean, it's not going to make or break the fly by any means, but it does clean it up, makes it look a little bit better. Um, if you want to on these, you can take some paint and throw some eyes on here, or you can put like the small doll eyes or whatever it is. Um, I'm just going to touch this up with yellow, and I'm going to finish it this way. But you can, by all means, throw on some painted eyes or, you know, throw the zap on there, the gel, and get some get some uh, you know fish skull whatever whatever style of eyes that you use you can throw those on there as well but I'm just gonna leave this one as is and we're gonna call that one good uh, one final thing that you can do to you know secure this head make it look a little bit cleaner is you can take some of this uh, clear nail polish throw on there and it'll really you know it, it'll make that head look a little cleaner but not necessary whatsoever uh, a little bit of glue would work on it just to give you a little bit of security, you're not going to have a tooth come in there and rip up your your uh, thread. But that's it. There you have it. There's Kelly Gallup Stacked Blonde. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments on this one, leave them with me. As always, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next week.